Thank you very much, Greg, for this very inspiring talk. And now it's time for yeah, time for uh, questions. Anyone wants to ask questions? I may start with one. Man kann Fragen auf Deutsch stellen auch, äh, wenn man das lieber tut. Äh, ich werde mich bemühen, äh, die Fragen zu verstehen, auch zu antworten auf Deutsch, wenn das leichter ist. So. But I'm going to ask you a question in English. Um, about, uh, I was very impressed, also reading your previous uh, contribution about that, uh, about your statistics of the, on the uh, Professors and their uh, backgrounds in, uh, in German speaking in the United States, world in the United States. And I wanted to ask, being myself a uh, sort of a information instruction junkie, how did you get this, uh, this information? Did you find it easy to mine for this data? Was it manual work? And second question, in case you don't, you did it. Uh, would that help making your point? I mean, if we as a uh, group, maintain better data, better and better accessible data about this kind of uh, There, were, I found some statistics I could get my hands on. There, there are, the German government has various statistics. Sometimes you have to interpret them because they don't really mean what they say, but they look really precise, even if they aren't. Uh, but a lot of the statistics I got by going through 780 web pages uh, of uh, different professors and just doing things like counting their the first 10 citations they had to sample what the language they were using. Uh, German, one of the things I discovered, that two things about my colleagues in Outrings Business Shop in German, Germany, I hope some of you were here, I hope I don't offend you too much. First, they all insult Wikipedia. And second, they all have Wikipedia entries. Uh, in English, we have the expression, have your cake and eat it too. Uh, so you can always find out when people, almost always find out, 100, 200 faculty members in Germany 197 times I could find out when people were born, where they were born, stuff that would be illegal to say in the US. I mean, just, age is really different. So I had to go through and scrounged all this stuff up by hand. Some of it. And yeah, the second question was exactly, would that make it, uh, I mean, Will help in uh, uh, making our own position as classicists uh, 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 more uh, clear to the general public if we maintain something that will, will this kind of information, some sort of data bank, will this kind of information were easier to access? Yeah, it's, it's ironic that the best way, the only way I could find out how many people study Greek and Latin. In the United States, for example, was to go to the Modern Language Association, which is really a bunch of English professors who have statistics on enrollments in languages other than English, and kind of reluctantly, they include historical languages also. Uh, and I, I think they, they always exclude us from various tables. They only want important languages. So yeah, I think that it would certainly help us to understand the nature of the discipline. I did not realize so I only established that the number of professors is going down, the number of students is going up, but the number of faculty, including middle bow, per student remains the same by combining statistics from two different sources and putting them together and, and drawing the conclusion that, at least in classics, maybe in other disciplines, they don't want professors as much. Which is kind of, an, that doesn't make us look good, but it's important to know. But some of the data you get from the kind of fake, for example, wonderful studies, done here in Germany on small disciplines, uh, which provides some data. So in other words, there's some stuff that exists, other stuff, you've got to do it by hand. Other questions? It's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. You, you were explaining the development of the concept of the Assistenswissenschaft in the early 19th century in Germany in, in that special context. Um, do you have any idea how that was adopted or evolved in other countries? So how now it, it, in, in that talk it seems to be a German concept in the, emerging in a spe specific context by certain persons moved forward, brought forward. How was that development? If you have any clue of that in, in other countries, like Italy itself, 
on, on their own history together. Yeah. Or France also. So, from Frankreich and Italian, from America and a bit of England, uh, had a bit of a bit of a bit of a bit of a bit wir in America unsere Überlieferung von Universitäten und in, in allgemein auch für Ausbildungslogie in you know, Besonderes von Deutschland bekommen haben. Der erste Elliot Professor of Greek uh, war um, einer von den ersten zwei uh, Amerikaner, der seine Doktorarbeit hier in Deutschland gemacht hat. Uh, und uh, der ist erst der er, first Elliot Professor of Greek at Harvard gemacht, genommen worden. Danach dachte er, dass er vielleicht etwas auf Griechisch lernen sollte und hat uh, danach gefragt, dass er Erlaubnis bekommen könnte, so dass er zwei Jahre in Deutschland studieren könnte. Uh, und uh, unsere, unsere Überlieferung ist eine Mischung in Amerika, ist eine Mischung von Deutschland und von uh, England. Uh, ich würde sagen, das Beste kommt von Deutschland. Uh, für mich, ich muss sagen, dass ich finde, es ist, ich habe jetzt zwei Häuser, zwei zu Hause, zwei ein, ein Zuhause in zwei Orte, in Amerika und auch in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, und man würde sagen, vielleicht, man würde sich vorstellen, dass vielleicht ich viel, fühle mich ein bisschen getrennt, ein bisschen uh, in, in zwei Stücke gesetzt. Uh, aber für mich mit zwei Häusern fühle ich mich jetzt, jetzt zu einem Teil uh, 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 ganz ganz äh, komplett auf einer Weise, die vorher nicht möglich war, weil meine intellektuelle äh, Überlieferung ist so eine Mischung davon, was man hier in Deutschland findet und was ich als Amerikaner, als durchaus Amerikaner äh, zu Hause bekommen habe. Äh, unsere intellektuelle Welt ist, ist also eine Mischung äh, und es ist nicht amerikanisch, es ist nicht deutsch, aber es, es, als ich hier bin, sehe ich immer äh, Ideen und Tendenzen, die äh, hier in Deutschland auftauchen, die ich nicht in Amerika finde, aber die für mich sehr normal, sehr gewöhnt fühlen. Die, die, so, es, ist, ähm, es ist eine sehr interessante Sache. Und deshalb, und deshalb habe ich vor 40 Jahren äh, angefangen, Deutsch zu lernen und habe das nie erledigt. Uh, aber trotzdem, uh, weil wir so eine starke Überlieferung hatten. Es gibt zwei Ströme von, von deutschem Einfluss in Amerika. Eins war die 9000 uh, Intellektuellen, die nach Deutschland gekommen sind, um ihre Doktorarbeit hier zu bekommen. Und dann die Millionen von deutschen deutsche Auswanderern, die nach Amerika gekommen sind. Die größte uh, ethnische Gruppe so uh, selbst genannte ethnische Gruppe in Amerika. I'm not sure that was an answer. But, okay. But, as someone who's traveled from America to, to just to hear you, see me. Um, uh, not quite. <laughs> um, but as one of those strange uh, other language speakers uh, from the uh, English literature profession, um, the, the place where that notion of hermeneutics had its heyday was via French in a way, but as you know, it was it was a favored term of high literary theory, mm -hmm. which existed in in a period in the United States, which is not wrong. So it's not if you were to do a Google engram of the use of hermeneutics, I suspect you would find today it's limited to some area of theology. But at one point it was crucial in the intellectual sense of what what the intellectual life was supposed to be in the university in America. The point of this being that's that is in some ways a past era, and I wonder whether that links whether you feel those those statistics that say this ratio has changed uh, somehow has something to do with what may not be a phenomenon in Germany, but is certainly a phenomenon in the United States which is, they don't care what we think anymore. 
they, 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 the ones who are paying our salaries. Yes. Um, and so the notion of, a, of an academic service community to teach students to do something um, is far more important than our doing any kind of independent research. And so while I, I love the idea of uh, picturing Latin and Greek students sometime in the future not doing fantasy football, but sort of correcting and translating things in the, in the Homer multitext, to me, there's something a little sad about that being where, where we're going. And I would love to hear you say that's, that's just a byway. In fact, there's something else in these stats that are saying something other than that. So first of all, I have to give some context to my colleague here, Cliff Wolfman. So if you think it was, I'm sticking my neck out talking about the evolution of Alterkunstwissenschaft in Germany in front of a German audience. Uh, almost all of whom will know more than I do. Talking about anything about theory in front of Cliff, Cliff had a PhD, has his PhD in English from the Vatican of Literary Theory, uh, Yale University. Uh, and it's a really, and I'm, I'm gonna sort of throw it around your question by picking up another story, is to me, one of the big narratives of the last 40 years is the final, it, a eradication of the German philological tradition from English, from American tradition. Uh, so I am just old enough, so all of my teachers, either they were, well, they were German, they were there for the wrong reason, but, uh, but or their teachers have been, had studied in Germany. Uh, and when I was born, you know, a third of our citations were to German scholarship. Uh, and English was invented at Harvard University as an academic discipline by people who got PhDs in philology in Germany. They were either classicists or they were doing, you know, old high, you know, uh, uh, old high German. Uh, and uh, they took these methods and applied them in the United States. And then Harvard dominated the study of English as it did classics. In the 1970s and 60s, and Cliff, you can correct this, my impression understanding is people from Yale went to France and they said, we can read this French theory stuff and we can blow away all these old fashioned people who haven't read this. And when I, in 1979, when I was sitting with the entering class of graduate students at Harvard University, PhD students in English, they all asked themselves, did you get into Yale? And all but one said no. The only one who did say no had personal reasons to stay at Harvard and the Harvard the Yale chair couldn't believe it. Yale completely supplanted Harvard, so that Harvard, no one who got into Yale would go to Harvard after Harvard had been hegemonic for a hundred years. So this, and now in classics, when I started in 1985, you could get a, you could imagine a career in the United States as a professor at Princeton or whatever, as an editor and commentator, commentary writer. Uh, I don't know of anyone younger than me who does that with a job. Uh, if you are an editor uh, and you're 30 years old, that's, you can be pretty sure you'll be driving, working for Uber, uh, and you're not going to have a tenure track job. Uh, you cannot get tenure for that at this point, and that's something we want to change. So there's a whole, that's not an answer to your question. Uh, no. <laughs> except, except that I think that the people fiddling around with these entities as sort of the editorial project isn't such a forlorn thing. Uh, as, as it can seem to be, and as it may have been in the past, I think is actually, I'm not sure I could see it as quite so dismal as I think <laughs> as you perceive it, but we can talk about that, not when, not when there are people wishing they would get into the fresh air, I think. <laughs> Any other question? You know, just and before we finish, a question to you, this is, this is one of my perceptions of being in Germany. When we have a meeting, in the United States, and it's like these people open the windows. When I go in and have a meeting with my chair, uh, and it, he'll take the window and close it, and I, my, my, and, and it'll get as hot as we want. I, I think that's, is it to shorten the meeting? <laughs> we all, we'll all keel over and fall asleep or be weakened? Anyway. Personally, it's because I'm getting cold very much. <laughs> <laughs> but I know about the others, and I <laughs> cannot speak for the Germans. <laughs> But I 
unless there are any other questions, unless there are other questions, there is wine and some uh, water and some refreshment before fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> or a mix. <laughs>